Hello everyone, here we are again. After a short break, we continue to tell you about cars and how they work in simple words. So, welcome to the Auto Advisor channel. Today we'll talk about what a shock absorber is. Consider its construction, purpose and working principle. And for this, I today have examples. This is strut assembly with a shock absorber, and also a rare shock absorber. The most interesting thing is that today we will also need this. So, as you all know, the shock absorber is a part of the suspension and works in conjunction with the coil springs. This is roughly how they are installed on the front suspension. Historically, springs were developed first, and only later the shock absorber itself. It turns out that on modern cars, coil springs cannot work without shock absorbers. What's the problem? The problem is that the spring is the source of vibration. So, here I have a regular ballpoint pen along with the spring. When a car hits a bump, the following happens. The spring is compressed, but vibrations will occur as the speed increases. Now, I will demonstrate this by pressing the rod itself. Look carefully. You see that when the spring is acted upon, the rod still vibrates for some time. That is, it does not immediately return to its original position. This can be depicted on the board with the following graph. This is my spring. Here it's on the board. And when the spring is acted upon, oscillations in the vertical plane occur, they are damped oscillations. This creates at least discomfort when driving, but the most important thing is that situations may arise when the wheel comes off the surface and you lose control of the car. So, an intermediate conclusion. It turns out that the shock absorber is needed to damage suspension vibrations. To our first approximation, the design of a shock absorber can be represented as a cylinder with a rod. Here is the cylinder, and here is the rod itself. Here is the rod. And there is a piston inside. As for the rear shock absorber, it also has a protective casing on the rod itself, a protective cover, depicted on a board as a dashed green line. Well, it's also essentially a cylinder with a rod. Well, now the most interesting thing is that the work of the shock absorber can be shown using the example of a regular syringe. The only difference from a regular syringe is that there is a hole in the piston. In this case, I did it using a drill. I have it here. As I said, there is a hole in the piston itself. In this case, I have two holes shown. Here they are. This is the green center line and the cylinder itself. The shock absorber is completely filled with oil. The black dashed lines depict the oil itself. Essentially, the work of a shock absorber is that it moves oil from the lower cavity to the upper and vice versa. That is, when the rod moves down, oil flows through these small holes from the lower cavity to the upper one. Since these holes are small in diameter, the downward movement occurs with some resistance, as well as the upward movement with the same resistance. I have filled my syringe with water, and as I said, there is a hole in my piston. This is the hole. Now I'll press down. Actually, water flows from the lower part of the chamber to the upper. When I move the piston up, the opposite happens. Essentially, we are moving water inside the syringe, but this movement occurs with some resistance. That is, it's a little hard for me to pull up and a little hard to push down. Now I'm going to pick up a real shock absorber and show you how it moves. So I will try to press now. You see, it creates some resistance for me in the downward and the upward movement. Like some kind of damage to cardion. That is, it prevents me from both stretching and squeezing. And when the coil spring tries to start oscillating, the shock absorber stops it. It prevents it from oscillating and thus the suspension vibrations are damped. There are two types of shock absorbers, oil and gas oil shock absorbers. Judging by the name, 
oil, it's clear that this shock absorber is completely filled with oil. We look at its design here, and it is completely filled with oil. A typical oil shock absorber is the rare suspension shock absorber. Now I have it in my hands. As I said, it creates resistance and thus dampens oscillations, converting them into heat. The second type of shock absorbers are gas oil shock absorbers, also called gas shock absorbers. A distinctive feature is the presence of a second piston. That is, there is a first piston and the second piston. So the second piston is also movable. It can move up and down. The second piston defines the cavity in which there is compressed gas. These green dots represent gas, usually nitrogen. And this piston can also move up and down. Therefore, when the shock absorber is activated, first, this lower piston moves a little downward, and then the upper piston begins to work. The gas oil shock absorber was developed due to the fact that the oil shock absorber cannot respond quickly enough to bumps. That is, if the car is driving at high speed, the oil shock absorber isn't quick enough to operate. Here, using the example of this rare shock absorber, which is an oil type, if I quickly try to compress it, it will not work at all. With a quick push, you see? At the initial moment it doesn't work, I can't compress it. Therefore, it turns out that at high speeds, the oil shock absorber is ineffective. Typically, the gas shock absorber is the front shock absorber. Now I hold it in my hands, and it can operate at high speeds. I'll even try to do it. You see, with sharp thrust, it immediately works. A characteristic distinctive feature of a gas shock absorber is that its rod, if it's not installed in the car, always in the upper position, because it is pushed from below by compressed gas. That is, this piston always pushes up the entire structure. I'm letting go. See? By design, shock absorbers also come in two types. The first type is monotube shock absorbers. Today I talked through the entire video about monotube shock absorbers. In their design, they have one cylinder. As you already understood, there are also two tube shock absorbers. This device consists of two nested cylinders. It roughly looks like this. Here are these two tubes. But I will not consider its design in this video. This should be a separate topic. It is a little more complicated. The front shock absorbers are loaded more than the rear ones, so their service life is slightly less than that of the rear ones. Typically, shock absorbers last from 3 to 5 years, or for about 120,000 kilometers. A typical shock absorber failure is oil leakage from under the road, that is, the seals themselves wear out in these places. The second characteristic shock absorber failure is mechanical damage. In order to extend the life of the seal, and the seal is located directly between the rod and the cylinder body, it is necessary to prevent the entry of dirt. To do this, a shock absorber boot is installed on the shock absorbers. This is roughly what it looks like. And I almost forgot, there is also a very important part for the shock absorber. This is the shock absorber bump stop. It's needed in those cases when the shock absorber is compressed directly to the shock absorber support itself, like this. So the shock absorber bump stop is needed to prevent rubbing between metal suspension components. In order to choose the right shock absorber and receive qualified advice, contact our online store, autoostrov.by. The link will be in the description. We have a wide range and a large selection of shock absorbers for any car. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And all the best to you. See you again.